Hey, Dr. Charles here, a.k.a. Coach MD, broadcasting Facebook Live, Magical Monday. And my previous videos, I like to start out with something funny, but I'm not going to do that. There's enough comedians on the internet that you don't need to tune into Coach MD to hear my corny jokes. And I, I'd like to focus on what we're going to do January, in the, in the month of January, what we're going to do is look at change and how we implement change in our lives. And that's why I, I look to do these videos every noon, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on uh, Facebook Live, every Monday, because Monday also is the beginning of a new week and it, it poses different challenges for us, as does the new year. So what I'd like to talk to you today about is creating your new normal. And what does that mean? Well, many of us, honestly, sometimes we feel irrelevant. You know, I know you say, oh, Dr. Charles, you know, I look at the Facebook and I see all these people with their great lives and their great jobs or great relationships. They're honoring their, their husbands and their wives on their birthdays and honoring their best friends. And, and you think, wow, you know, that's not me. These great vacations and all these friendships and everyone's having such a great life and, and that's just not me. I, I want to make a change. Well, I have news for you. Those are the highlight reels, right? Those are the, the, the what we see if we tune into a, a broadcast, a sports broadcast, for instance. They don't show the whole game. They just show you the highlights. They show you the best plays. And, and so that's our human nature. Many of us will do that on Facebook. So when we're looking to make a change and creating a new normal, that's, that's how we make this change. It's very important not to look at others and not to uh, feel as though that's how our lives, we want our lives to be because they all have their challenges as well. I, I guarantee you that. What it's very important to do to make a change and to create your new normal is to understand that, the norm, that we are what we re repeatedly do. In fact, I think Aristotle is the one who said that. We become what we repeatedly do. And so we forge habits and we develop expectations of ourselves and, and, and self-definitions that tell us we're, that's who we are. That's, that's the, 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 the type of where uh, I'm not an outgoing person. I'm not a, a person who has a lot of self-confidence. I, I don't have... Uh, self-discipline. I can't do that. Why, how could I do that? So those definitions, we become, become very familiar to us. It's what we expect. It's what we're, that's our comfort zone. As uncomfortable as it might be, those are the things that keep us stuck. And those are the things that don't allow us to make that change. They become normal for us. So what, what do I mean, creating a new normal? Well, creating a new normal means making th those things that are outside of our comfort zone our new comfort zone. So it's very often, I, I find, even with, with myself and, and others who I speak with, that we, we have this kind of comfortable, no matter how miserable it is, there are many people who I know who are very stuck in, in very dysfunctional relationships, why, even abusive relationships. And, and why is that? Well, guess what? It's the, the idea of what is on the outside of that relationship, the unknown, which is more dangerous to the brain. So what happens is we're in this nice, comfortable zone, no matter how uncomfortable it is. When we step out of that comfort zone, it's not uncommon to say, wow. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, how did I get here? And then step right back. That's our brain fighting and fleeing us back into what's known, what's expected, what's common, what's normal. So creating a new normal means making the unexpected expected, making the unknown known, making the uncomfortable comfortable, making the abnormal normal. So it's important to understand that in order for us to make a change, we have to do these things. It's, it's, it's essential. And that's meaning stepping outside and understanding that those things <clears throat> that we think are dangerous make us feel vulnerable or insecure actually are the places that can make us the most secure. And it's important to know that to doing those things, what I've observed, 
is being aware that you will fight and flee, even if it's right for you. You will fight and flee. Your brain will try to propel you back into that uncomfortable area. And so if you're feeling irrelevant, it's likely because you're stuck in this place that isn't really who you are. To get out of that place, you must understand that you have gifts and talents and skills. And, you know, I, I, I see it in our educational system so much. I saw it with my own children and, and others who I've observed and who've come to talk with me that our educational system, at least in the U.S., we focus on weaknesses. So let's say you, you're a, a student and you're really good in math, but you're not really good in English. That was me. I was I felt very insecure as a kid. I remember being in the remedial reading group in third grade, which made me very insecure with my English and reading ability, even throughout into my adulthood, until I, I you know, got a hold of these concepts. And so what happens is a lot of times, instead of focusing on... I think we're having some some technical uh, on the weaknesses. Uh, sorry about the, the technical difficulties. Uh, hopefully this is still recording and you're getting it. Um, but we focus on the weaknesses and often people, um, children are taken out and their, their, uh, their weaknesses are highlighted. And often we do that with ourselves. We look at our weaknesses and we let that define us. That becomes our comfort zone. That becomes our what's expected, what we expect of ourselves. And what's necessary to do, if you're going to make a change and make and create the new normal, it's important to step out and, and know that you have those gifts and start honing in on those gifts. Maybe write them down. At least one gift. You have at least one. I know that. And it doesn't mean give up your job. It, it means that in, in, in order to reach for the stars, you have to have two feet planted firmly in the ground. And that's, that's a saying that I... Um, that I've read, I've, I've written a similar quote to that, and I've read others with similar uh, observations. But So it doesn't mean leave your job, but it means start thinking. Start thinking about what you want to be doing. What's, what's more in alignment with your gifts and talents and skills? It's really important to know that. And just before I end the video today, I uh, just want to give a little emphasis on magic. Now, yeah, magic. I'm not a magician, uh, you know, create, pulling things out of a hat, whatever. I call this Magical Monday because often we start the week, we start any change uh, being scared and being frightened. And one of the, the uh, what I've learned in my life, one of the, the uh, aspects that gives me confidence to move on, that somehow things are going to work out okay, is an idea of magic, which I call daily magic. And these are the coincidences that happen in our daily lives. Uh, and if you, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, you're not practical, you're, you know, magical miracles. What am I going to uh, learn and, and talk about that kind of nonsense? I'm practical, I'm logical. Well, okay, so I'm talking to the practical, logical. I was a math major, so that's, you don't get any more logical than that, okay? Well, try to run the numbers, Run, do the probability. I want you to just try the probability. The next time something out of the ordinary happens, I want you to run the probability of those two events coinciding at exactly the same time. So I want you to run the numbers. What would the, the, the odds be? When I was traveling uh, a few months ago and we stopped at a, uh, a gas station and uh, went into the, the, the little shop there, and in the, in the refrigerator, now, Coca-Cola does this new thing where they put names on different bottles, right? So we, we looked at the, at the refrigerator, walked in, my wife and I, and staring us right in the face were two Coke bottles. One on the left said Zachary. One on the right said Jeremy. Now, those are two names that aren't the most common names in, in, uh, in the English language in the United States, Zachary and Jeremy. But guess what? You viewers have just learned the names of my sons, of our sons, my wife and my sons. 
Now, what would be the odds, honestly? First of all, they're not two, you know, uh, usual names, right? We stopped at that time, and there weren't any other names that matched that behind them. We checked, right? So we stopped at that exact moment to see that. If we had been maybe five minutes later, Coke is very popular, so it would have been one of those that would have been gone. We stopped at that moment to see that. But not only that coincide. what about the, the, the person who was loading in the, all the bottles, whatever? So you have to run the probabilities of, of the loader, right? Of the us stopping there at that time before they were gone and seeing that. So what difference does it make? So what? The, 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 I didn't win the lotto uh, or the, um, the Powerball or the, uh, the uh, 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 millions uh, with the lottery that just someone just won 460 million, whatever. To most people, that's a miracle. That's magical. Well, the skies didn't open. That didn't happen. But this event happened. So what does that do for me? You know, it, it, what it does for me, it tells me, well, there are certain things that are going on that I'm not particularly aware of but might have my back, maybe just creeping in to give me that little message. So before you start thinking about making that change, understand that you can do it. You have those gifts, those talents, and guess what? The daily magic. So start keeping track of that. Now, be careful about it. You could get obsessive about it. You could start looking for things. And, and if, you, if you have any you know, type of mental illness or, or anything that you have challenges with, be careful. Okay, be careful because I don't encourage that. I encourage you to have both feet planted firmly on the ground before you reach for the stars. So that's uh, my, um, my message to you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Magical Monday Facebook broadcast. I'd be anxious to hear your, uh, your comments. It's hard for me to respond to people when they comment live, but I will, I promise you, we'll look at all the comments. And, uh, uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, I'm going to be doing these again every Monday, uh, noon, Eastern Standard Time, and I hope they, they are helpful. And please feel free, um, if, you, uh, if there are any topics you'd like me to discuss, write them in the comments. Um, but I will be doing, for the month of January, focusing on change and how we're going to implement and start that change in our lives. So thanks for tolerating the technical issues, and I look forward to talking with everyone again or you listening, I guess we're not talking back and forth, but you listening again um, in a week's time. But keep, uh, keep in touch on uh, Coach MD. Visit my website, co- uh, Dr. Charles Glass, uh, charlesglassmanmd.com. And I uh, look forward to staying in touch. Bye for now.